right, it's Friday Q&A time. As always, thank you guys so much for leaving great questions for me to answer. I really enjoyed this video. And if you have questions for next week, put them in the comments or write to me on Facebook. Let's get into it. Any Iron Maiden tones for the Axe FX3? Well, I just saw the video Fractal put up where Def Leppard are using Axe FX 3s and if you kind of know your rigs, you know Def Leppard were using like the JMP1 and then the Marshall Power Amp combo for a long time and Iron Maiden were using exactly the same thing. So I imagine if the Leopard guys can get their tones from the Axe FX 3, then you should be able to emulate the Iron Maiden tones as well. And the thing with any of these artist style things is it's sort of like, what era are you going to go for? Are you going to try to go for a live tone? Are you going to try to go for a recorded tone? They're obviously going to be different. So what I like to do is just kind of my take on, you know, this is an Iron Maiden inspired tone or a, you know, Gary Moore inspired tone or something like that. So I will definitely do something you know, probably in the next month or two when I get around to it. I've got a real JMP1 sitting around here and it's, it's cool because you can plug in and you can kind of get those live Maiden tones almost immediately with it using the right guitar. So yeah, definitely something I'm gonna do. First choice for pickups, well, depends on the guitar. That's sort of the short answer. I love the Seymour Duncan stuff. The Custom 5 humbucker is probably my favorite Duncan pickup. I think the JB and Jazz is a really good combo in a Les Paul. I really like the bare knuckle stuff and I really like the PRS stuff after about 2008. My PRS SC245, 245? 245 uh, has just the 245 pickups and they sound amazing in that guitar. That's probably my favorite sounding guitar. Uh, but I've been using some pickups, for example, in this guitar, which just so conveniently happens to be here, uh, by Martin A. Smith. If you go and check out his website, he basically is a one man operation uh, winding his own pickups and he can wind you exactly what you want basically. But he's kind of focusing, I guess, on more the vintage thing. But uh, the thing that's making me curl my toes is there's a humbucker in the bridge and there's a P90 in the neck. And that, in a Les Paul style guitar anyway, is my favorite combo because you kind of get the you know classic humbucker thing going on in the bridge, but then you get this single coil, like the fattest strat or tell you've ever heard in the neck position. So I'm really enjoying that combination. And you should check out Martin's stuff because he's from Perth and I'm from Perth and you know, Perth's isolated and everybody from Perth needs the best chance that they can get. So check his stuff out. So am I interested in going on your podcast, Carl? Of course I am. And for everybody out there, if you haven't heard the Hotel California podcast, Carl's a local guy, a member of the local Perth music scene. He's an absolute fanatic when it comes to hard rock and metal and especially 80s stuff. And uh, yeah, you should check out the podcast because he's got some great guests on it. And I have a feeling it's gonna be one of those things which is only gonna continue to get better and better and grow over time. And he loves wrestling, so go and check him out. What tuning do I use on my guitars? Well, this guitar, which again is just conveniently right by, is in drop C and I'm using 10 to 52 gauge strings. I think that kind of answers two questions in one. So uh, 52 for the low C. Uh, the only thing that you have to really, really invest in if you're going to tune your guitars down is get them set up properly. I've had this guitar set up by Tim at MT Guitars, and he's, I mean, you can hear when I hit it really hard, there's a little bit of string buzz, but when I play it through an amp, there's no string buzz. So that's that kind of like dialing it in just, just right so that you don't get any string buzz when you're listening through an amp, getting the action low enough and stuff like that. I know there's people who kind of swear by like 60 gauge strings for drop C, but for what I like to do, I like the slink and I kind of, you know, I love old Black Sabbath, I love Tony Iommi tuning down and it just, there's a very particular sound about the string being slightly floppy that I'm super into. Into the floppies. Will I keep using the AX8 Live or will I use the Axe FX3? I want to move all the ragdoll stuff to Axe FX3 as soon as there's a foot controller out, but for the AX8, it's just so easy. It's just the easiest thing I've ever used in my life for a rig, especially if I'm doing a cover gig or I'm doing a session. I can just pick it up, I pick up a guitar, I can go plug into the PA and use it. So I recently just got these brand new buttons for it. I'll show you. So here's the AX8. Where is it? There it is. Uh, yeah, I got these from a website called thehomemusician.com and they're basically a 3D printed button, which hopefully you can see if it will zoom in. Yeah, really, really cool. So it's 3D printed, it just pops straight on. And uh, yeah, that's kind of been an upgrade I've done to the AX8, which makes it look super fluoro and high-vis. Uh, makes it a bit easier to step on, and yeah, 
I love using it live. I'm going to keep using this thing live until it dies, which hopefully won't be for like another 20 or 30 years. So it's a great piece of gear. I love this. Michael Gallus or Michael Galaz, as we would say in Australia. Can I be in the video, please? Well, if you want to come around, dude, be my guest. Uh, I am in the most isolated city in the world, though, so uh, it might make for a nice holiday. But if you do come through, please let me know. Love to uh, hang out. Love to hang out with any of you guys if you're ever coming through Perth. Hit me up. So Nicholas Lundstrom asks, I hope I said Lundstrom. Is it Lundstrom or as an Australian would say like Lundstrom? Asks, uh, basically, any ideas to do presets for famous tones. Uh, like I was saying about the Maiden stuff, yeah, definitely. There's a couple of guitar players uh, who, well, more than a couple, there's a lot of guitar players who I'm really inspired by whose tones I want to be able to get out of the Axe FX 3. And it's just a very time-consuming thing. And then, again, like I said earlier, it's sort of my interpretation of those tones. So I like the Axe FX 3 because I can get my sound out of it and I can chase tones that are in my head that I haven't necessarily heard on recording so that's what I use it for 95% of the time but I always find I learn something new when I try to like cop a classic tone so I did have a John Sykes preset for the AX8 which was uh, pretty popular on Axe Change so I'm going to revisit that one and yeah guys like Lukather and Landau and that kind of stuff uh, all these epic tones from Van Halen tone though just plug the Axe 3 in and use the FAS Brown model and you've got a brown sound straight away so that's how to do the Van Halen thing the only thing is figuring out how to play like those guys. Do you use Mesa tubes in your Rev G? No, I've actually got EHX tubes in there at the moment. Uh, when we finished recording Back to Zero, the amp basically blew up. It was sort of like, yeah, we finished all the guitar tracks and then the amp stopped working. So I went and got it serviced and there was a blown tube and there was some issue with the power supply. So I kind of got everything retubed. And uh, yeah, the last time I checked, there are electro harmonics tubes in the Rev G. I think they sound pretty good and uh, Actually, from memory, I think there's actually the Mesa tubes for the rectifier tubes. So yeah, there's still some Mesa tubes in there, but the rest of it's electroharmonics. Now, this is the sort of content that I've been waiting for. What sort of hair products do I use? Uh, basically, I just use this, like, at the moment, this Sukin shampoo. I've got really sensitive skin, so anything that's not too harsh on my actual skin goes in my hair, which is kind of weird because I'm trying to talk about caring for my hair. But I do that. I put a little bit of Moroccan oil in the ends, uh, a couple of days a week and I guess most importantly I try to eat well I eat a lot of fish I try to eat a lot of vegetables and not eat takeaway and stuff like that and I also only wash my hair about every seven to ten days which feels super grody when you're trying to get into it but I would recommend that if you're washing your hair like every day or every second day you're just basically just damaging it so I uh, get it on that nice long cycle I know Ryan the singer from Ragdoll he's got like it's funny because everywhere we go Half the people will be like, oh, hey, man, we really, really like the show, cool songs, blah, blah, blah. And the other half of people will be like, dude, what does your singer do to his hair? So uh, he's probably the guy to ask, but, and he'll just say he does nothing. He goes like a month without washing or like six weeks. So he's just got this amazing, naturally thick hair. So you have to use what is right for, uh, I guess, your genetics and also within your budget. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Just, um, just yeah, do it. Having long hair is wicked. I recommend Will I ever consider doing pentatonic prison shirts? All right, you guys leave me a comment. If you would buy a pentatonic prison shirt, I will get the design made up and I'll do a small run. I'll try to keep them affordable as well. And uh, maybe with the money that I make off it, I will go and buy a piece of gear. So we'll do something like that. I'll make some t-shirts and I'll review a funny piece of gear or something like that with the profits that I make. Leave a comment if that sounds interesting and then you can get the pentatonic prison t-shirt. Have I ever used a treble booster? Yes, actually I've got a video which is titled Why You Need a Treble Booster. There's a great uh, company run by a friend of mine called Anarchy Audio. I've got a lot of their stuff, I've tried a lot of it out and he makes a treble booster called the Pinkman. I believe it's like a germanium thing. If there's any in stock, you can go, he's got like a Facebook group on Facebook. <laughs> a Facebook group on Facebook, imagine that. And uh, yeah, he does custom run stuff and small runs, so uh, definitely check that out if you want a great Aussie treble booster. And yeah, I think everybody should have a treble booster if you're using non-master volume amps because they can make your guitar come to life. It's the age-old 60s and 70s guitar trick and it still sounds good today. Mua G200, I would love to try one out. That's on the list of pieces of gear I want to try. I also want to try their preamp live. And I've just done a review of the uh, Friedman little micro preamp that they're doing. So hopefully at some point I will get the Mua stuff in my hands and I will do some reviews with it. So Mark Pritchard asks, what 
camera should I use? Well, let me do this. There's my phone that I'm reading the questions off at the moment. Uh, let me just do this. I'm going to take a photo. I just got a brand new camera, so I'm using this. Now, let's see. There it is. So I am, whoa, there we go, using the Canon EOS M50. It is a mirrorless camera. So for a long time, I've been using uh, my wife's uh, Canon 5D Mark III, which is an amazing DSLR camera, kind of really great if you're doing live music photography like she does. And I basically just started using that for all the videos. And this camera arrived like two days ago, the EOS M50. I basically just looked at what a uh, bunch of other people on YouTube whose videos I liked. Um, I looked at all the England stuff and I looked at Fluff stuff and you know all these kind of guys who do good video content that we all consume and I noticed a lot of them were either using like cheaper DSLRs or they were using the mirrorless cameras so I did a bit of looking around and Canon make a mirrorless camera which I bought the EOS M50 and uh, yeah it's kind of I think it's their first decent one I got it because it does 4k video I'm not shooting in 4k at the moment I'm just shooting in 1080 but I picked it up for under $700 Australian on eBay and it's really nice and compact. It's got heaps of features that make it really easy to make videos like you just saw in the picture. The screen pops out so I can monitor it. Like I can look at myself here and go, oh wow, there I am. Oh my God, my hair looks so good. And it's got a touch screen and a bunch of other stuff that the DSLR doesn't have. So, and the other advantage is it's like, I can take this on the road with me. It's really compact. I can film gigs with it. I can walk around with it. It's got like image stabilization. It's a really, really good little camera for the money. So uh, Panasonic, uh, Sony make mirrorless cameras that do 4K. And this one came bundled together with a little lens as well. So check out the like EOS M50 or equivalents, I guess, uh, whatever's gonna work for your budget. Or honestly, man, like just get an iPhone X or one of the Samsung S9s. The video quality on those things is insane. As good as these cameras, obviously, you don't have all the kind of features of being able to change lenses and stuff. Uh, and you have to put up with like filming and people sending you messages. But at the same time, you know, if you're gonna get a new phone, just do that if you're just wanting to start out doing guitar videos, it works fine. But yeah, I'm super stoked with the EOS M50 and I'll do a little review for it coming up soon. Well, I mean, you can see, this is, this is the auto settings as well. I was so lazy today. I just put it on auto, turn my lights on, and it, I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys reckon? All right, music production, great question. How much does it cost to make an album? I'll use the example of our last album, Back to Zero. Firstly, I'll tell you how we did it. We went into Crank recording in Perth, and I think we booked four nights there, and we did all the drums in four nights, and they were really, really kind to basically hook us up. We'd work with them quite a bit. Lee, the owner, is super cool, and basically gave us a discounted rate to work at nights. However, it meant that we were really, really under the pump to get all those tracks done. And subsequently, with this new album that we're doing, we're not doing that. We're gonna try and spend a bit more time, you know, just doing songs two at a time so that Cam, our drummer, doesn't go absolutely insane while we're doing it. But back to zero, I think probably from memory cost us, this is including all the studio time, the production fee, uh, mixing, mastering, uh, getting the album mastered for vinyl and distribution through Firestarter Music, who are here in Australia, who if you're an Aussie band and you want to put your album out, go to Firestarter. Adam and Heidi are amazing, really great to work with. And yeah, I think that probably cost us, including the, well, I won't include the vinyl run because that was really expensive because vinyl is expensive. Just to do the album and basically have it in stores and online uh, cost us probably about $10,000, which is uh, pretty reasonable. But in general, uh, depending on who you're working with, I mean, if you're working with good producers, you're probably going to look at somewhere between $1,000 and $2,000 per song. So if you're doing a 20, not a 20 song album, a 10 song album, I would say anywhere in the ten to twenty thousand dollar range, and you know, for Back to Zero, we got hooked up with Mates Rates. Our producer Troy Netherband spent so much of his own time on that. He's a really good mate of ours, like I said, but he put in so much work, and it came out sounding so good. Same as the mastering engineer Paul Logus, he looked after us, and same at Lee at Crank. You know, it's it's one of these things where we've been making albums for a little while now, so we've kind of got this network of people who we like to work with, who are always really, you know, they look after us. That's one nice thing about the music industry and people you can trust in the music industry, the good ones uh, will look after you and the bad ones will just rip you off. So yeah, and we funded that ourselves. So no label involvement at all, zero dollars from the label, 
well, because we don't have a label, we have distro in Australia and Europe and we do everything else ourselves. So uh, 10 grand and, you know, that was, we just funded that by doing gigs all across Australia. So that's one way to do it and make an album you're happy with. And the great thing was we did, we just made an album that we liked. No one else was telling us, oh, you should do this or you should do this. We just went in and recorded it until we were happy with it. So yeah, in short, you're going to spend a lot of money on recording. Make sure you trust the people doing it. Make sure you don't let somebody rip you off and try to do as much of the groundwork as you can yourself. For example, we did drums at Crank and then we did everything else here in this room. All the guitars, just put the cabinet in another room and mic'd it up. We did all the bass, all the vocals here. So that saved us a lot of money. I remember the first EP we did cost us like 16 grand or something like that. But that's because we were idiots and we went, we need the main room at a big studio so that we can all sit in there and go, yeah, look at us. We're hanging out in the studio just like that Def Leppard classic albums. We're rock stars now, right? And uh, we just wasted a lot of time because we weren't prepared. So be prepared and then spend the money because it's worth it and try to do as much as you can. And realistically, you can do an album for 10 grand. Australian I'm talking about as well. So whatever that is in American dollars or euros. Uh, yeah. All right, that is this week's Q&A. Again, thank you so much to everybody who asked the question. If you want to ask a question for next week, put it in the comments here or write to me on Facebook. You guys have been awesome. I will see you next week.